that are alive, you are coming with me. All right, guys. So this one I'm really excited about. This is something since I was a kid and first saw the movie. Uh, if that tells my age, don't care. <laughs> uh, the first time I ever saw him pull his gun out and and just, I don't know, everything about it, I was like, I want one of those. And I've been waiting to do this one for a long, long, long time because I wanted to be able to uh, do it justice. And um, I wanted to be able to make every everything as as functional as possible on it. Um, everything from the slide um, working, the locking hammer, uh, the slide lock, all of that, um, including the, the mag release, the mag release works. So, um, yeah. So let's get to assembling it. It's actually, it's not a hard assembly. Um, I would kind of rank it in kind of medium difficulty. Um, you know, it's, it, this is definitely one that we have to think about where we do and don't need to paint. Uh, cause there, there's a lot of areas that we don't need to, to add the thickness of paint to, uh, you know, and it's not necessary to actually paint. So, you know, let me get everything unpacked here. This is the way the kit comes to you guys. Um, there it is, the receiver, uh, the grip surround, there's the muzzle brake, uh, there's the, the mag and the slide. And let's get all these little goodies out here. Uh, this is the barrel. Uh, it is a two piece barrel. Um, it is notched. And the reason it's notched is when you glue these two together, there's a notch on the back of the barrel that you'll see here in a minute where it gets glued to uh, the barrel mount. And in doing that, it makes sure that once it's all together, that the holes uh, are properly spaced and facing out of the vents on the, the muzzle brake. So let's uh, get all that out. Get all this out the way. I absolutely love this and so excited about this. Uh, there's our little orange tip. And also, uh, let's see. That's our upper rail. That's going to be the sight rail um, for the top of the muzzle brake. And we got the, the correct screws for it. There's rear sight. Um, that's our hammer and our trigger. Lay that off to the side here. Now I may, while I'm building this, I may back up and redo the order in which I'm doing things. Cause I've built like five of these so far as I was adjusting parts and stuff. So I, I built and rebuilt in many different orders, but this is going to be our fire selector, um, that actually mounts on the back of the, the receiver. This is what would be the slide release, um, on a Beretta, which this is what this gun is based off of. This slide release would swing, release the pin, the pin would come out, which would release the slide and let the slide come off. But that's not exactly how this one goes, goes together and comes apart. This is, this is the trigger to the hammer linkage that is on this side. And it's the same way a normal Beretta actually works, um, goes together and slides back and forth in there to, to, to like that. So, um, that's what links the hammer to uh, the trigger to the hammer. This is going to be our slide lock, which it's this is what locks our slide up and down or back and forth. Here is our mag release. Um, come on, focus for me, please, if you would. Go ahead, take your sweet ass time. Come on, come on. There you go. But this is our, our mag release. It basically is shaped and functions just like a, the real mag release does, uh, except it was made to have a big fat spring put in it. So, and this is going to be our barrel mount. This is what I was talking about. The two piece barrel, once it's glued together, ends up gluing to here. Now, the cool thing about this model is 
besides the the barrel where it gets glued and that gets glued to that and a few of like the little de decorative things this model can be fully unscrewed and taken apart and put back together so you can assemble this assembled you know all that kind of cool stuff here is our little bag of hardware that's going to be our rod for our slide springs we've gotten one long spring, two long springs. So you'll notice we got, I'm trying to keep them apart here. Ah, springs love to attract each other. Anyways, we've got two long springs and two medium springs here. Um, and we've got one short spring. The short spring is going to be for the mag release. And then we have an assortment of different screws and and such here. Um, a number of set screws, and I normally try to cover this in every video just because it's a standard question. These are these are not. Hang on, let me lay these down. Get it to focus. Okay, these are not screws where the head is missing. Okay. Uh, these are set screws, and if you notice, one end has an opening. That opening requires an Allen. And this isn't an uh, Allen, it's a Torx, but same thing. Goes in, and that's how you... So, a small Allen wrench, and I believe it's a 1.5 millimeter or maybe a 2 millimeter, because these are 16 millimeter um, uh, set screws. Everything I work in is in metric, except for very, very few screws that are in are in standard sizes just because um, of the kit and being correct towards the kit but 99 percent of everything i do is in the is in the metric system um <coughs> better system <clears throat> anyways <laughs> um all right so here's the first thing we'll do we'll go ahead and do uh, like a, just a couple of the little um little light things to get things out of the way here we have our our muzzle brake here we have these notches, which match our sight rail. There's a long here, short here. So if you take it and just place it to where, well, I sure wish this would focus on my, what I'm trying to show. There we go. If you just take the front notch and put it to the edge right there, and it will just get screwed on. Now you'll see, and I and I tried to clean up everything as best as I humanly can. Of course, this one I just kind of threw in a bag real quick because I was trying to get ready for the video, but there might be some little hairies here and there, but um, what we're gonna do is these three holes, there are three screws that are just like this, little socket screws. Okay, these are little Allen screws. There's three of them. Um, it's the only three. These three match. Just a matching three in there. So let me grab my little, uh, my little worn out driver set here. And now these are one of these things that, when you're painting, um, I would probably. Like if you want to paint the sight rail and, and the muzzle brake separately, here, let me take this off because I need to make sure that I'm in the mindset of covering where to paint, not to paint and stuff. Uh, Cause I know it helps you guys out. Uh, I wouldn't bother painting up inside of where these grooves are at. Like you could paint this separately. And um, what I would do is take a piece of tape and just stick it to here, a small piece to these flats and a small piece to these flats and then paint because the flat parts are all going to be contacting here uh, and the reason for that is if you build up too much it's already a pretty good snug fit you know it doesn't come off and if you get too much paint clear coat whatever in the in the same goes for painting this um, you know it's just if you get too much you, you would rather add some paint here and not here to take up what little space you can just because it would be easier not to have to tape off little tiny square spots on the muzzle brake but anyways so we'll get that together we'll put in the three screws in this 
And I'll apologize like I do in every one of my videos for my shaky hands. I've had way too much coffee today. Doing way too many different things today. So it just, it is what it is. Um, all right. So there we go. Sight rail. Um, basically, in a nutshell, muzzle brake's done. It's not that hard. Um, the slide. Uh, probably go ahead and I'll, we'll glue all the, the, the rear sight and stuff on when we get to that part. Um, we'll go ahead and let's get the, the receiver and we'll get the mag release and the short spring. Now, this is like in all my other stuff, put the screw up to the hole and rotate it backwards or counterclockwise and it will pop down in the hole. Uh, I've really got to get this camera to, to, to stop lagging so bad on focusing. But anyways, so if you'll notice in the, in the body here, in the receiver, there's a hole down inside there. That's where this spring goes. And if you notice, like you, you've got to tilt it just a bit, kind of just move it around. Now, the first time you stick this in here, matter of fact let me let me double check because again when i'm cleaning up all the support material for you guys off these kits and stuff i try to get everything but there might be little tiny burrs or whatever blah 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 here or there so let's go ahead and and what we're doing what we're looking for is if you notice it's like this little duck bill right here this duck bill Man, this camera is just about two seconds from pissing me clean off. God dang it. All right. Anyway, that duck bill fits that square right there. So what we're going to do is come down here and we push it together. And if you notice, it gets stuck in there. That's just because it's the first time it's been pushed in there. And if we take our finger and mess around with it from the back. And the reason we have to do this is because it's you know, all printed in different directions. And there we go. And if we just keep working it back and forth, there's plenty of room in here. It's just the fact that these, these parts are printed in two different directions that they want to start. Um, they really want to drag because there's little inconsistencies hanging in the way. But if you see now, it's starting to want to pop all the way out. Um, so, and see, now it's, and you move it as much as you want, works perfect now. Okay, so on this, this is one of these things that just like on the real, on a real Beretta, the grip surround actually I really want this camera to stop doing this. God dang it. There we go. The grip surround forms a, a wall that actually holds this in. So that's all that moves right there. That's it. Okay. So when you're looking at this, of course, you want to do what I, what I just did as far as like getting it in there and, and working nice and smooth before you know you you find like final assemble but you do not want to paint down in this hole at all and what i would do is i would take tape and tape around this edge right here oh let me get back on the camera for you guys here i would tape right around this edge to where all i'm painting is what you see from the top so if you look down at this that's what you're painting because the thing is, is you don't need paint down anywhere else. And all paint does on painted surface to painted surface is it can be a pain in the ass later on. And like I said, this is as much as it moves. You can look here and say, well, okay, that's visible here. If I want to tape at that angle, you know, I can do that. But again, you know, that that's literally all this button moves right there. So, and that, that's probably, uh, let me throw everything everywhere. One of the most important places that I would try not to get uh, anything down in. Let me get this spring back in here. All right. 
So we're going to lay it off to the side because we now that's ready to go together, but we're not going to put that in until we put the grip on because like I said, the grip surround is what actually is the retainer for the mag release. <clears throat> All right. So let me think here. What we can do now is go ahead and put um, the hammer in place. Let me get this support material out that I did not bother to clean out of mine. There we go. So what I'm going to do is if you notice down in here, there is a hole. Here, let me get this. There's a hole right. All right, dadgummit. Let me find some better light here. There you go. There's a hole down in here. Boy, I gotta, I'm gonna have to figure out something on the focus on this camera. Anyways, there's a hole down in here. That's gonna be for, you'll need one of the medium springs. You'll need the hammer. And you're going to need one of the set screws, okay? So what we're gonna do is we'll take the spring and we're just gonna stick it down in the back in this hole right here. And you can twist it a couple times if you want to and kind of push down. What happens is, is it goes in the hole and it just sits there at an angle. That's all you got to do. Uh, let me swap the driver here. Okay. So now I'm going to come to this side and this upper hole right here is where this goes. Look at it from the top. It looks straight. Look at it from the side. It looks straight. Go ahead and screw in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this in until right before it, it actually comes out on the inside here. And then I'm going to back it up just a hair. All right. So you're going to take your hammer with the spring on the back and set the spring down in this hole. That's all you got to do. Now, this is where you hold your tongue just right and you hold the hammer just right. And you tighten this down, and if it feels like it hit that hammer, just loosen it up. And you're going to want to move this around until you find, until you find, nope, that ain't it either. One of those, a uh, little bit of a guessing game. Let me see, uh, okay. There it is. All right. And you know what, 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 once you get there, because the, as soon as you get there, it goes right, it goes through perfectly smooth and you're all good. So, and that's what you got right now. That's, that's all we're dealing with. All right. Make sure there's nothing in here. That, there you go. Okay. So then the next thing we're going to do is. Let's go ahead and let's build the barrel real quick. So I'm going to need my glue. Uh, this is CA glue. It's basically, long story short, it's a two-piece super glue. Um, uh, allows you to put the glue where you want to, work with it for a little bit, and then hit it with the activator, which causes it to set. Um... Now, all I'm going to do here is go in here. And again, you can just use regular thick super glue. I just like CA glue because it does give you a chance. What those, those screw up moments where you screw something up and you need to move it a little bit. Or super glue, the second it starts setting, it's basically setting. So uh, I'm going to hold this together with one hand while I'm trying to. Keep it all nice and flat, pressed together and straight and, okay. It's set good, yeah. Okay, all right. So this is what I was talking about, this notch on the back of the barrel. There's a notch or there is a uh, little matching notch and it'll pop together like that. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to glue that together. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to put a little glue down both sides of that. I am going to go ahead and spray that. And we're going to pop it together. Let that set for a second. 
so we don't have no glue dripping out anywhere because I am bad about that. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we have this steel rod. Uh, this steel rod, if you look down into this front hole, there's the big hole. And then down in there, there is another hole. What we're going to want to do is we need to glue this down in that hole into the little hole down in there. Uh, this, this basically is just to hold the rod. It's not a super critical, oh my God, it's got to be straight. Uh, I mean, don't make it crooked or anything. I mean, I guess what I'm getting at is if it's not 100% perfect where it needs to be, it's okay and you'll see why. I think that's, you can kind of run your hand up and down right there and see that it's centered. You can look at it this way and see that it's centered. So uh, the whole reason for that rod is if we get our two long springs here, we're going to slide that on. We're going to slide that on. Now we're going to take our slide, okay? And we're holding the slide up, down, or up, down, upside down, words, please. Um, you just take this at an angle and slide this through here. And if you notice, the springs are heading for that hole right there. So we're going to go through and we're going to push that. And if you notice, the steel rod just came out. Okay. If you pull this forward, and you may or may not be able to see it. Anyways, there's a little seat that you can let that rest on. So right there, don't bump it because if you bump it and it pops off, you can't get it to shoot away from you there. So what we just want to do is we just want to set that together just like that. Um, so now we want to get our receiver. Um, actually, let me find the Phillips screw here. I'm trying to think of any steps here before I start like, I don't think I'm missing anything. I, oh, you know what? I am missing one thing. And let me cover that with you real quick. When I'm cleaning these up, you know, the, these th the way these things print, especially something like this, it has a butt ton of support material, all kinds of stuff to make sure it sticks to the build surface really well and everything moves good. And I try to clean all this up, but, uh, and I should have went over this first. Take your slide and slide it on and make sure that like with no effort, like it'll it'll slide my thumbs in the way right there. See, it's sliding all by itself without a problem. If you put it on and it gets to about here and it seems like it tightens up a little bit, come in here and, and clean off this back edge a little bit right there on both sides because again, this prints and it may flare a little bit. And like I said, I try to clean this up because there's attachments that go all the way around all of these little, cause it starts printing this whole big piece on these four little tiny feet. So uh, there's a lot there to make sure that it stays where it should go. But anyways, uh, that, that's one of the things we wanted to do before anything is make sure that we have all this slide nice and clean and perfect. So let me put our slide back together. That. Almost let it shoot across the room. Okay. So what we're going to need now is we need the Phillips screw. Please focus on my hands. There we go. All right. Need a Phillips screw. It's the only one in there in the kit. Uh, let me change. Oh, boy. Let me see if I can find a better Phillips tip than that because that's tiny. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to make it work because I'm not getting up and going to find a different one. Okay, so here's what we want to do. We want to take our take this bad boy and we're going to slide it down in here, okay? Now, we want to pull it back. And when we have it back, just grab a hold of all of it so it don't move. So we've got it spring-loaded right now. If I let go, the slide would slam forward. If you notice this hole right here, okay, that's where while we're holding all of our tongues correctly and 
all that good stuff, we're going to put that Phillips screw in, okay? So I'm going to try to stay on camera while I screw this in because you know how exciting that is to watch a screw get screwed in. Ah, yeah. There we go. All right. Now. All right. Work it, worky. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to put the slide catch or slide lock, you know, whatever you'd like to call it, on. And what we're going to need on that one is there is a 20 millimeter long socket screw. Um, let me change the ends again here because, oh, there we go. All right, so this, uh, you see the big hole here on the side of the receiver. This, this piece matches and goes right there. So what we're gonna do is flip this over and this back, matching back hole goes right there. We're gonna screw this in. Now what, what we're gonna do on this piece is we're gonna screw this down until this piece is snug Okay, does it want to move or anything? Or it wants to move, but lightly. We're gonna back it up just a little bit. And what we're trying to do is the screw, we wanna make sure that it's tight enough that whenever we flip it down, it stays down until we wanna flip it back up. But now we got, there we go. Slide's working, catch is working. Everything's awesome. Uh, okay, so uh, the next thing we need to put in is going to be our trigger. So we need the trigger, we need another set screw, the 16 millimeter set screw, and we need another of the medium springs. Well, which is actually the only spring that's left at this point. Uh, this is the fun, fun, fun part. Not so bad. As I say, it's the fun part. Before we even try putting that in there, Let's get our um, set screw started to, it's going to go in this hole right here. Um, look down from the top, make sure it's straight. Look from the back, make sure it's straight. So straight 90 degree, look from the front, straight 90 degree. We're good to go. Screw it in until it cut and then back out so that it's not interfering with anything. And then we can set it right there. Now, let me try to get it to where, uh, okay, see the hole down in there? That hole is actually the bottom side of this, uh, this barrel mount. The barrel mount actually forms the back side of this spring hole. So what you can do is set the spring down in the hole and it just drops in there, no issues. You wanna take your hammer and there's the spring hole for the hammer. And of course you want it facing forward because I don't know how else you'd put the spring in. Now you have two holes in this, uh, in this uh, trigger. You want the bottom hole. The top hole is gonna be for our linkage, okay? So you're shooting to go into that hole. So many jokes, so many jokes. So basically when I push the, the trigger in there, if you see through this top, there's our top hole. So we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of move it around a bit till we know we go in the hole. And this one's kind of easy because if you just hold it from the back back here where the trigger is flat anyways, you can just screw it straight in. There you go. I back up a little bit, a little bit, you know, make sure it's all in there nice and where it's supposed to be. So, cool. And if you notice when See, watch the top when I pull that. All right. So the next thing we need to do, this is gonna be our linkage that connects from the trigger to the hammer. Um, what we need to do first is stick this in that hole and move it back and forth. And the reason being is again, when this prints, it prints standing up. So when it stands up, there's support material in there and there's support material on the side of this hole. We just wanna make sure that 
you know, we have no binding and it's nice and clear before we put all of our little set screws in here. And I probably ha have some little stragglers here that I'm going to clean off the edge there. Okay. So. What you're going to need is these two other set screws, okay? These two set screws are going to get screwed into these two holes. So all you got to do is take one set screw. Important part, make sure that you look, you look straight down and you turn it a 90 degree and look straight down that way and that way because you want these going in straight. And you don't over torque them. You just screw until it stops. Uh, same thing here. You look from the top. You look from the back. From the top, from the back. There you go. And now once you get these together and you see how, like this one back here, I, I have it where it fits loosely. Once you get this together and you see how all this works, you can come back and you can unscrew these. And I'm going to go ahead and do mine right now. Uh, you can go ahead and put just a drop of glue. Weep. And again, remember if you're using super glue, you don't have much work time. Clean it. There we go. So this is the what what it ends up looking like. That's that's what we're looking for here. And basically, all we need to do is pull the hammer back. We're looking to put this uh, set screw in this front hole. Now, the first time you put it in that hole, it might it might drag on you. It might not. Push it in. Push that in. And there you go. Now, you may stay here and play with it and it stopped working because, again, this relies on the grip being on that holds to hold the tension and stuff of where all it needs to be. So we get all that together. We seem good. Everything's working. Yep. 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 There we go. So before I put the grip on real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue the fire selector on. Um, which it goes just like this with the little knob out the back. That was a cool thing about this. They were supposed to use uh, the Desert Eagle um, for his gun, and the, the director and stuff thought that it looked too small in his hand. So they went back to the drawing board and ended up taking a Beretta and lengthening the trigger guard and building, of course, what you see, his gun. But the gunsmiths were actually able... It is a full auto, fully working uh, automatic nine millimeter gun. And they were able to squeeze in, what was it, single shot, um, uh, burst of three, and then full auto. I think it's burst of three. Yeah, it was burst of three, I think. And then full auto. And... It, it was really cool because one of the designs they, they did is they extended this size side of the slide over here because they extended how far the normal Beretta grip went up and what all it covered. Because all right in here in this fire selector switch, the, the guys that machined and made all that possible made all of that function work right in here. I just thought that was absolutely phenomenal that they went through all of that and actually made it work. It was fully functional. That's just like uh, they were. One of the problems was is they couldn't shoot a scene in burst mode without needing to change the mag because it was a 21 round mag, and they couldn't get an even number of burst out of it because maybe it wasn't three rounds. It was 21 round mag, and it it was six. It was single fire, and was it six shot in full auto? Whatever it was, they couldn't get a full, even number of bursts. They always ended up, I think, with one one um, bullet left in the mag. And um, the director, and the, they didn't want hit to show him reloading. And um, 
the armor and the designer of the gun actually managed to work that in, uh, I think, into to two of the scenes um, where it actually shows him reloading the gun. And they didn't want, the, the directors didn't want it in there, but the armor, the, those guys, they did. And I, I don't know, it's just some more of that, that background stuff that I thought was kind of cool. Um, oh, and so then the next thing is, so I glued that on there. Uh, next thing is, oh, 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 hang on, glue, and that gets glued on right there, and talking about places that don't need to be um, um, painted, uh, the rails that you can't, so the, the rail of the receiver that's inside this slide, there's no sense in painting any higher on the receiver, so there's no need to paint the rails of the receiver, and the groove in the receiver. I also, the same thing, there's no sense in painting the inside of the slide. One, that way you can make sure the areas that contact and slide, which are just simply the lip on the inside of here and on the receiver, don't have paint. Because as anyone knows, even if paint is fully dry, if you let a painted thing sit on a painted thing for a long enough period of time, they tend to start adhering to each other again. I mean, I did leave plenty of slack in the, the sliding, but if you come back here and you and you you see where they slide together, now you paint the back edge here, but as far as what's covered, none of that I would paint. I wouldn't even paint any part of the inside of the slide, and that's just because there's no need to paint it. You never see, you might see the in part of this the inside of the slide like right in here, which you could paint, uh, but it's just basically a nutshell. You just try to stay away from your your. Uh, your sliding areas, uh, just like when I design, I always design, especially two matting places that are going to rotate past each other. I leave enough gap to calculate in a little bit of primer, a couple of base coats, a couple of coats of, of clear and stuff on both pieces and still have a gap there. But having a gap doesn't mean something won't ever set against itself and Again, like any of y'all that have messed with paints for any length of period of time, you could have two parts separ uh, separated for months and be fully cured, put them together, everything's great, put that thing up for months and come back, pull it out, and you're going to have to pop it loose sometimes just because that's it's the tendency of, of any chemical uh, bonding um, when it comes to paint, they have a tendency to just want to continue to adhere to each other. And that normally where they uh, adhere to each other, it's not a bad, um, it's not like really hard to get apart. But when you're talking about something that's on both sides of an internal slide, you can get to the point it locks down so hard that you're just like, damn, there's not much I can do except for just, you know, bust it loose. All right, um, so we got our slide release lever on, uh, our uh, fire selector. We're going to put our uh, rear sight on. Uh, make sure I have all my stuff cleaned up here. Yep, so it's just going to get glued on, and when we glue it on, we're going to make sure that it's glued straight. Um, put a little glue down this whole thing. And... I put my activator usually on immediately. Sorry, I had to use my my belly there to hold two things at once. And I'm just going to hold it for a second and let it dry. Make sure I don't have anything coming out anywhere. All right. Uh, all right. Put my glue up. Okay. So at this point, um, all we need to do is screw on uh, our grip, which what we're going to do now is going, we're going to take the mag release and put it back down in there facing, of course, the correct way, the only way it can go in, and see how nice and smooth it works. Does it catch it all? Just got to work it a little bit. And... Uh, Sorry, I'll try to keep that on screen. I had to get over here and hold all this in place, hold my tongue just right. There we go. 
And you'll have to pop, when you push it together, you'll have to push it right past the edge of the fire selector. Uh, it's one of those things that you, I guess you could put the grip on and with the slide off, glue the slide selector or, or the fire selector on, but I just prefer to do it that way. And when you push it up, you just push it through there because you got to push around this and all that. So I'm holding, I'm actually squeezing together right now to hold it against this. Um, there you go. Let me change out bits here. So now what you got is you got four of these flat blade screws. These are going to be our grip screws. Um, and on his gun, I'm, I'm almost a billion percent sure that th these screws will be black. So you'd want to paint them black. And there's nothing that, you know, keeps you from, gosh dang it, keeps you from not holding your tongue right while you're trying to put a screw into something. Um, that keeps you from painting the screws after you've screwed them in. Of course, it just depends on how you do your painting and how you do your parts and your prep and stuff. I like to paint all of my stuff separate. That way I can dick around with it if I need to and make any adjustments if I need to. Um, and then once we get together this together, we're going to check the the sliding mechanism for the, the trigger to the hammer linkage. Make sure it's moving freely because there is a recessed spot in the back side of this trigger guard here. Oh yeah, we're good. Okay, so now basically for the muzzle brake, this is very, very simple. If you notice, there's a little hole at the bottom down there. That's where the rest of this metal rod goes. So we're just gonna put the barrel up in there, slide it together, and you have one screw that holds all that together. And it's gonna go right there. Oh, and here, let me, I mean, it's the last screw that's left, but I'll just, I'll, I'll show you. It is a low profile, big head Allen screw. So we're going to put that bad boy in there. We are going to hold tension on everything, hold it up against the body as well as we can, put some torque on it. There we go. And see if you notice the sight rail, it clears the front side of the slide. It's got a notch in it, so we're good there. Okay. So now that really the last thing is on the mat on the mag release here is the mag release you can you'll have to dick you may have to mess around with it a bit see it goes in locks in perfect and you go to release it there we go perfect um, and there's a lot of slack in here and the reason for that is because when you paint your mag of course you want your mag painted. You can't go, well, I'm not going to paint it from here up because if you ever pull it out, it's going to look goofy. So there's slack in here for you to paint this to look, it, you know, as nice as you want to. That's the notch right there that the mag release locks into. And once you get it painted, you might go in here to pull it out and push this button and it. you kind of have to jiggle it to get it out. Once you've painted it, and if you have to do that, just take your guard, your your uh, hand grip off, pull this out, and on the opposite side of, of of inside there's the half moon. That's the shape where the notch is at that catches this. You can go in there and file the edge just a little bit and fine tune it to where it's going to release it every time without issue. So we have a functioning mag, uh, mag release trigger. Trigger the hammer, slide, slide cocking the hammer. There you go. Auto nine. I'm I, I absolutely love this. I what I want to do is I'm gonna make me uh, a, a portion of his thigh, just that part with the doors open, 
and with the, the, the actual holster that the gun sets in already popped out, that's the stand that I'm going to make for mine. So mine will be mounted standing up in the stand like it's in his, like it's in his thigh holster with his thigh open. Uh, that's, that's probably what I'm going to do, the, the little holder stand that I'm going to make for myself. I think that's going to be cool, but I'm really, really, really happy that I could get all the features in here, uh, everything working like it should. Literally, I think the only thing that doesn't is the slide release, but I still have a slide release the way that I have it in here, which, you know, sometimes you can accomplish the same thing in multiple different ways, especially when you're working with different materials instead of steel or, or uh, aluminum or anything. I'm working with um, um, a thermal plastic. So if you can make it work the same way and accomplish the same thing, I'm, I'm tickled about it. But yeah, so there you go. There's RoboCop's Auto 9. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, just uh, you know, ask in the comments. Uh, go to the website, shoot me an email, whatever you need to do. Just... Uh, but I'm here to answer anything that y'all need. Have a good one. Also, don't forget your orange tip.